Oh, yay, oh, yay, oh, yay. On Wednesday, October 12, 2011, the Supreme Court will hear oral argument in a case called Florence versus Board of Chosen Freeholders of Essex County, New Jersey. This is a case about the scope of the Fourth Amendment and whether or not jails can routinely strip search uh, inmates when they come into the system, uh, regardless of the reason they've been arrested. In other words, can the jail routinely strip search somebody who's arrested for a minor nonviolent offense, even if they have no reason to believe that person may be ha may have contraband on their person? Historically, most courts have said the answer to that question is no. The Supreme Court has not reached this quest this direct question before, of course, although it has held that a federal facil facility can strip search vis uh, all inmates regardless of why they are incarcerated after contact visits with uh, people from the outside. Nonetheless, other courts have in the past held that, that m people who have committed minor nonviolent offenses cannot be strip searched absent some kind of suspicion that they actually have contraband. In the last few years, the Third Circuit and the, excuse me, the Eleventh Circuit and the Ninth Circuit, and now in Florence, the Third Circuit have changed the direction of the law and have said it is all right for jails to conduct these routine strip searches. The reasoning uh, is largely has to do with concerns about people being able to smuggle contraband into the system, in part by arranging or inducing or recruiting people to be arrested on minor offenses. Uh, and that there is a concern about the risk of contraband entering the system in that way. Uh, there, there are obviously significant differences between uh, people who've been arrested for minor offenses and people who visit uh, inmates uh, in contact visits, which might make it less likely that the arrestees would, in fact, have contraband. Um, and I expect that that will be one of the arguments that the Supreme Court and the advocates talk about. It should be a very interesting oral argument. Some of the, the some extremely well-known and well-established uh, advocates are arguing. Carter Phillips represents from Sidley and Austin, who is, uh, has argued numerous cases in the Supreme Court, is representing the counties. And uh, Tom Goldstein, who is the proprietor of SCOTUS blog, among other things, is representing the plaintiff. Um, so I hope we will have oral argument available for you as soon as it's available to us.